Greetings, my dear friend, and thank you so much for your support. Have you ever wondered what would you do if you faced with a sudden emergency? Should your priority be securing water, finding shelter, or addressing another critical need? Whether it's a natural disaster or an unexpected accident, being prepared can make a real difference. In this video, we'll explore the rule of threes, a simple yet powerful framework that can help us prioritize our actions in various survival situations. We will delve into each rule while I really hope you never face such circumstances. This information should prove invaluable just in case if you do. Enter the rule of threes. This simple yet powerful framework outlines the priorities crucial for your focus in emergencies and survival scenarios. Rule number one is three minutes without air. The first rule emphasizes the critical importance of breathing in in any emergency situation. Lack of oxygen can lead to unconsciousness and pose a serious threat to our life. Whether it's a fire or a confined space or other conditions, securing a clean air supply should be your immediate focus. It is important to understand controlled breathing, air filtration techniques, and how to navigate situations where oxygen may be limited. Imagine being in a fire or a smoke-filled environment, trapped in a car crash, or stuck in a basement, your lungs beg for air. Time is crucial. You only have three minutes to breathe. These are in just any three minutes. These are your body's countdown, a desperate plea for oxygen before darkness takes hold. Remember, aid becomes your most precious treasure. It is important to stay calm. Every panic gasp pulls in smoke, not air. So here's what you do. First is to grab any cloth, including your shirt you're wearing, and swiftly cover your mouth and nose. While any mask is helpful, remember that every second count. So avoid wasting time searching. If feasible, dampen the cloth and use it to cover your nose and mouth. It may not be perfect, but it buys you valuable time. And next is to don't run like crazy, right? Hot air and smoke rises, so crawl low to the ground. Stay close to the floor where the air is cleaner and cooler. Next. Use your hands to feel your way if visibility is seriously compromised. Follow the walls or familiar sounds, not just blurry eyes. Smoke clouds our vision, so feel your way along the walls or listen for others escaping. Blink frequently. Blinking helps to hydrate your eyes and clear away any foreign substances. However, be cautious not to rub your eyes as this can introduce more particles and worsen irritation. This simple method could be a lifesaver in critical situation. Remember, these three minutes aren't just about reaching the exit. They are about keeping your brain working once you get there. But the rule of threes goes beyond fire. Imagine being buried under rock or struggling to the surface after your aid tank runs dry. In these moments, every breath is a fight and knowing how to use them wisely can save you. Panic makes things worse. So slow down and take deep breaths. Think four seconds in. One, two, three, four. And two seconds hold your breath. One, two. And six seconds release your breath. That is one, two, three, four, five, six. Remember and repeat it like a mantra. Now let's look at rule number two. Three hours without shelter. Moving on to the second rule, three hours without shelter. If we caught ourselves in an unexpected intense heat or bone chilling cold, it could lead to hypothermia or hypothermia. Building an improvised shelter becomes our top priority. Let's explore some shelter possibilities. Debris hut. Gather leaves, branches, and even animal bones to create a windbreak, an insulating layer. Choose a stable location, stack debris in layers, and ensure proper drainage. Next is our natural shelters. Caves or overhangs and rock formations offer pre-built protection. Beware of unstable structures and potential animal inhabitants. 
snow trench. In the icy wilderness, dig a trench deep enough to cover your body. Angle the wall for insulation and create an air vent for breathing. Next are using the emergency blankets. This lightweight wonder reflects your body heat acting as a portable shield against the cold. Wrap it around you or incorporate it into your shelter for added warmth. Now let's unlock the science of staying warm. Dead air space. Trapped air is your silent protector. Layer your clothing. Create air pockets within your shelter and utilize materials like dry leaves to maximize this insulating power. Reflecting your warmth, aluminum foil or even a reflective emergency blanket can send your precious body heat back to you. Don't underestimate the power of a little shimmer. Wind chills your bones in a flash. Build your shelter facing away from the wind. Create wind breaks and close any gaps to keep the raft at bay. Beyond the shelter itself, remember these additional tips. Stay dry, whether in cold or heat, wetness steals your warmth. Seek higher ground in flood, build grainy channels around your shelter and avoid getting soaked. Maintain body heat. In cold weather, light exercise can raise your body temperature. In hot weather, avoid sweating at all costs and seek shade to conserve energy. Next tip is signal for help. A mirror flashing in the sun, a crackling fire or a loud whistle can be your lifeline. Learn signaling techniques to attract rescuers if needed. Now let's talk about the third rule, three days without water. Dehydration can set in quickly and finding a safe water source becomes your number one priority. We will cover techniques for locating water. If you're lost in wilderness, when facing dehydration in the wild, it is essential to know how to find and purify water. Look for signs such as animal tracks, vegetation or low lying areas, which may indicate the presence of water. Once you find a source, purify the water before drinking. Boiling is a reliable method and you can fashion a simple makeshift filter using a cloth or even sand. Remember to ration your water to make it last until you find a more suitable source. Next is to follow the green. Lush vegetation often indicates hidden water. Sources like springs or trickles Look for areas with vibrant moss, fern, or large trees. They are nature's thirsty whisperers. Listen for gurgling whispers. Stand still and listen. The faintest gurgle could lead you to a hidden stream or underground spring. Don't underestimate the power of a little ear to the ground detective work. Animal cracks and bird behavior. Follow animal trails especially those leading downhill. They often point to hidden water source. And please be cautious while you're approaching water source when the animals are around. Watch for birds gathering. Feathered friends know way to find a refreshing tip. Next is to read the rocks. Look for damp crevices, mossy overhangs, or areas with dew condensation in the mornings. These can be a sign of seeping water or underground reservoirs. A travel tip for you, try to keep a straw filter handy while traveling. You can use the straw to drink directly from the lakes, rivers and streams or fill a container to use your straw water filter on the go. Improvised purification. If absolutely necessary, you can improvise filters using cloth, coffee filter or even activated charcoal. Remember, please try this as a last resort. It may not be completely effective or safe. Earthquakes. Now let's look into some scenarios related to earthquakes, broken pipes and leaks. In the aftermath of an earthquake, locate shutoff valves to stop main water flow before attempting to collect any remaining water from pipes or storage tanks. Rainwater collection, if debris allows, Set up makeshift containers to collect rainwater for future use. Now let's look into plane crashes. Emergency kits. Survival kits often contain water purification tablets and small containers. Use them wisely and ration water carefully. Dew collection. In humid environment, spread out large leaves or fabric to collect dew during the night. Car accident. 
radiator water. As a last resort, if you're trapped with your vehicle and you're desperate, consider using radiator water after filtering it through multiple layers of cloth or clothing. Remember, this is a very risky option and should only be undertaken in very dire circumstances when there are no other options available for you. Once you find water, purification is the key. Now let's look into some techniques to purify water. The first is a good old friend, boiling. The simplest and the most reliable method. Bring water to a rolling boil for at least one minute to kill harmful bacteria. The next is water purification tablets. These handy tablets chemically disinfect water, making it safe to drink. Follow the instructions carefully for proper dosage. Never drink salt water. It will dehydrate you further. My friend, these are emergency measures and should only be used as a last resort. When possible, prioritize contacting the emergency services and receiving professional help. And always prioritize your safety, my friend and avoid taking unnecessary risk when seeking or purifying water in unpredictable situation. Always signal for help. Conserve energy and prioritize signaling for help as soon as possible. Finally, the fourth rule, three weeks without food. While food might be on your mind, your body is surprisingly resilient. Understanding how to manage hunger and prioritize energy Conservation is key. While food is essential for long-term survival, understanding your body's needs and priorities is key. We will discuss how the body responds to hunger, the importance of conserving energy. Learning to identify edible plants, basic hunting and fishing skills will come in handy. Start simple. Learn to recognize a few common edible plants in your region. Focus on those with easily identifiable features like berries or familiar leaf shapes. Utilize a field guides or online resources specifically dedicated to identifying edible plants in your region. These resources will help you differentiate between edible and poisonous varieties. Never consume an unknown plant. If you're unsure about a plant's edibility, do not eat it. It is better to be safe than sorry. Focus on starchy plants and nuts. These provide more sustained energy compared to fruits and vegetables. Learn to build basic traps and snares using natural materials like sticks, vines and uh, leaves. These can be effective for catching small animals. Utilize basic tools like sharpened sticks and string or even clothing fashioned into a net for catching fish in shallow waters. Most importantly, my friend, is to keep a cool head. Conserving energy is equally important, so balance your efforts with the potential benefits. It's a delicate dance between securing sustenance and not expending more energy than you gain. Remember, your body is like a battery, my friend. Every moment draws power. So conserve your energy, prioritize rest, seek shelter from harsh elements, and minimize heavy activities. Sleep is your ultimate power nap, boosting both your physical and mental reserves. In the face of adversity, we are not alone. Share resources, knowledge and support within your group. Community and collaboration can be your greatest assets. Remember, teamwork makes the survival the dream work. Now let's look at different scenarios in which you can signal for help. First is the international distress signal. Always remember the universal distress signal, which is SOS. Either signal visually using a mirror or audibly through whistles or calls. Ground to air signals. Create a large geometric shapes like triangle or X on the ground using rocks, branches or other materials, which is visible from the air. Fire signals. Build a large fire in an clear area and add dampened branches to create thick white smoke and please be careful with fire right you don't want to burn the whole thing down additional tips learn basic navigation skills knowing how to use a basic compass and map can significantly increase your chances of finding your way back to safety practice in controlled environments before venturing into the wilderness Practice your survival skills in a safe and controlled environment like your backyard or a nearby park. These guidelines are not one size fits all, so adapt them.
to your specific circumstances. As we wrap up, I want to leave you with a thought. Life is the most incredible and precious thing. We may hope to stay young and live forever, but the reality is that everything has its time. However, while we are here on this beautiful green marble, let's embrace every moment. Let's live as much as we can and appreciate the wonders around us and cherish the time we have. Because in the grand scheme of things, life is the greatest adventure of all. If you like the content I'm covering, my friend, please consider subscribing and I'll greatly appreciate that. And I can thank my subscribers who've been here. I know it's been three months that I posted a video. The work has been crazy, but um, I'm trying to figure out a way to ensure I can um, post videos more regularly going forward. And my wish for you is for you to live long, my friend, and live every last drop of it. Take care. And once again, thank you for your support. And you guys are awesome. A random shout out to our community members to show my appreciation for your support. Thank you.